I'd like to move on to this from Dindu. He wanted me to go over this fucking program that's being done in New York City. They're offering taxpayer-funded adult-level writing courses for immigrants and illegal aliens. Excuse me. No human being is illegal, okay? They're dreamers. Um, offering it to illegal... This person has to say, offering it to illegal immigrants is not so bad, but not great, because it helps integration into the culture. What? No, it doesn't. Illegals is not because they shouldn't be there in the first place and shouldn't receive any benefits. That is ridiculous. Uh, offering it to legal immigrants is absurd because this is what they're doing with it, right? Dreaming out loud, applications so for 2021 virtual workshops, Pen America's tuition free writing program for young, undocumented, and immigrant writers in NYC. So benefits include mentorship and instruction pub- published in immigrant writers, straight up giving them $200, a piece. Uh, automatic publication and performance opportunities, access to a writing community, um, eligibility requirements. They're not going to s- straight up say you can't be white, but aspiring immigrant writers. So you got to be, you know, you, you, you got to be of the non white <laughs> persuasion. But I don't, I mean, in, in an age when middle American working class, blue collar whites are offing themselves, getting addicted to opiates, uh, funding all of this. Why? Why are we prioritizing $200 and publishing like immigrant writers? I mean, we know... uh, Let's look into the... Maybe I should save that. Hold on. It's ghastly. But once we get into the people organizing this stuff, we'll see why it's not good for any immigrants at all, legal or illegal. Because this is what they do with legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. It doesn't fucking matter. Either way, they're rabble-rousing them with lefty propaganda. And, I mean, effectively getting them to riot. (laughs) And just attack random white people. Get them fired, yada, yada, yada. Be cancel armies. They're looking to make published writers out of this program, big business, and their SJW allies want to find the next great romanticized immigrant story that'll make mass migration seem like a benevolent cause to support BASED? Yo, what is the number for the base department, okay? I gotta report. I I gotta make a claim, okay? Look at this icon. I wonder where their allegiances lie. Uh, Getting personal stories slash lit perspective is a valid niche and is one of the fastest growing genres... Uh, nobody cares, though. Again, billionaires who fund these programs or advocate for these programs to get subsidies, they care, right? People in New York care who have trust funds. They care. People who are, people who are insulated from the riots care, right? Pragmatically, if the tax break includes a return on royalties for anything published, then this is very likely to actually make a tax profit. So no matter what, it is profit good. Dude... <laughs> This person sounds like a fucking Lolbertarian or something. This is why you don't want Lolbertarians in the movement, dude. Yeah, dude, as long as monetary profit happens, uh, yeah, just let the let your culture be completely subverted, dude. As long as a capitalist can make some fucking money, dude. <laughs> like, what? I gotta ask, why is it, specifically when you comment in this sub, you copy and paste that string of emojis? That is a valid question. I'm not seeing a string of emojis to IDK what you mean, unless you mean that five OK signs. Oh my God. (laughs) Imagine if this was actually some kind of 40 chess move by the government designed to gather contact info and addresses of illegal immigrants to speed up deportations. I mean, it obviously isn't that, but imagine. (laughs) Yeah. I say, you know, to everyone who attends this and deports all those who aren't legal immigrants, that would be amazing based and ice-pilled? I don't have anything against offering people with no outlet, some form of education, especially... No. Bothers me. Since the next year's book award ceremony is going to be nothing except for POC slash women writing about how the academic or cultural world doesn't accept them with when the existence of their presence at the ceremony... Yeah, no. I mean, they, again, that's the entire point of programs like this. It's to... It's to just subvert and undermine and... It's to seize political power and to create a one-party ruled state. That's what it is. And that's what the banks are funding, that's what the corporations are funding, and that's what BLM and Antifa are the foot soldiers, street army of. 
person says, I remember going to school with Bosnian refugees in the 90s. They weren't just given the chance to learn the language, but were given monetary incentive because many of them didn't even want to. The only English I ever got out of any of them was fuck you. <laughs> what is the point of this personal anecdote on the internet? I'm highlighting that motivation is important. We know that the left is doing this. I mean, I imagine success or failure will largely depend on the ideologies of the participants as well. No, of course, they're all going to be leftists. They're giving them $200 and publishing. Publishing, you know, of course, the content of what they're going to be publishing is like riots are cool, women are awesome, men suck, white people suck, the traditional family sucks, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, give your money to Blake's or they're going to riot and burn stuff. I mean, we all know, <laughs> and this is being subsidized by the tax base, you know. Oh, we already read through that. Let's look at the overview, shall we? Dreaming Out Loud, Spring 2021 Application Overview. The Dreaming Out Loud program at PEN America is a paid, tuition-free, creative writing workshop series for young immigrant writers, primarily those who are undocumented, DACA recipients, and or dreamers who came to the United States when they were children by providing community and professional support to the next generation of immigrant writers. The program seeks to counter anti-immigrant sentiment in the U.S. and to amplify the voices of many living... I have to read this in the Beavis and Butthead hippie, like, <laughs> the Beavis and Butthead hippie uh, character voice. Of many living in this country who are marginalized because of their immigration status. So basically, you want a street army of just murderous, riotous arsonists to fight off the people who are calling out the fact that you are a cabal of satanic kid touchers. Got it. Good. <laughs> uh, people should go through the legal process of becoming citizens when they get here. I think that we should completely shut off all immigration for at least the next 40 years. Of course, that's not going to happen. That's viewed as extreme... Uh, not even you can't even barely get like one percent of the electorate. I mean, you could probably get the electorate to support that if you worded it like extremely surgically. But you're not going to get a party with enough traction behind it to push that line. You're really not, because I mean the corporate interests are behind mass legal and illegal immigration. I mean H one B, H two B visas and all that stuff. What's the what's the visa that Charlie Kirk is super stoked about? Where you have to come here with a million dollars and uh, start a business, uh, hire 10 people. Basically, like, you know, Pajit's come here and they open up a crappy, like, corner store where they sell chips to people and they only hire their family, you know. Meanwhile, like, white kids are left to do what? Like, <laughs> I don't know, speculate on cryptocurrency, become, like, content creators. I don't know, dude. Like, work at McDougal's. I have no idea. Um, under the tutelage of the founder, Alvaro Enrique, and other established writers from immigrant backgrounds, participants are paid a small stipend of $200 to develop original fiction, poetry, nonfiction, and plays to perform at public readings and to publish in various print and digital formats, including our ad annual anthology. This is just a college program to, like, create, again, like I was saying, like those urbanite rabble-rousers who go around recruiting mentally ill fucking people to put on, like, Antifa masks and go fuck with people. Like, this is just what the entire point of this is. It, there is no actual, like, I mean, those people in the comments of that Reddit thread were shills. There is no monetary profit from <laughs> giving DACA recipients $200 stipends to write ill, you know, ill-conceived slam poetry about fuck whites. There's absolutely no profit to be had there, but billionaires want it to happen anyway. So it, so it happens because there's a fucking agenda to fucking push, okay? It's uh, anyway. Let's look at uh, I shudder I shudder to think at what I'm about to look at because I've looked I've looked at this already. <laughs> but let's look at the one of the people pushing this, shall we? I think the person teaching this Oh, God. Oh, God. Nicole Marie Gervasio, uh, I believe, is one of the purveyors of this curriculum. Uh, as the child of working class, uh, I'm sure, fellow white parents in Trenton, New Jersey, 
I was the first person in my immediate family to attend a four-year college. I received my Bachelor of Arts in English and Growth and Structure of Cities. Oh, God. Of Bryn Mawr College, where I also concentrated in Africana studies and creative writing. So just a complete and total waste of money. It's to create these kind of people who mobilize psychos who go into the cities to start fires. <laughs> I have to fucking read. I have to fucking drive that point home, dude. Look at this, okay? Look at this. Bachelor of Arts in English and Growth and Structure of Cities, okay? These are the kind of people that advocate for, you know, uh, low-income, uh, subsidized housing for immigrants and stuff like that. Um, look at this just demonic visage. <laughs> oh my god, working class. Since I can't say it outright, I mean, other than just, like, your standard oy vays and stuff like that, I mean, fellow white, I mean, let's just say that none of these people are working class. <laughs> They're virtually none of them, okay? Upon graduation, I was awarded the college's highest honor, the Gertrude Slaughter Fellowship for Academic Excellence. I also achieved the first place in Catherine Irene Glasscock intercollegiate poetry competition whose past recipients include Sylvia Plath and James Merrill Gross. After college I worked on the sales force at Google Inc. in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, so this these people are just vampiric kid touchers who support polyamory and just like harems of I, I just I, I'm I'm at a loss here. These are evil people who feast on infant foreskins to please Moloch, okay? <laughs> Actually, more like a pigeon. Uh, dude, I mean, this is how people of this particular tribal persuasion pretty much all smile, okay? They look like they're smiling as if they're just about to chow down on a severed baby's foreskin. Like, they just look like an evil, disgusting fucking <laughs> gremlin, like, Rumpelstiltskin, lizard, rodent, like, dog person. I, I don't know. And, of course, they work for Google. Of course. In San Dudu, Cisco. Okay. Before returning to the East Coast for graduate school, yeah. Coastal urbanite elites, cosmopolitan... Received my doctorate in English and Comparative Literature with a certificate from the Institute for Research on Women, Gender, and Sexuality at Columbia University in 2018. I devoted my time at Columbia to transforming my research methodology and pedagogy through decolonial feminism. <sighs> Think of how many millions, or perhaps like, well, for her specifically, millions of dollars, I mean, of public money is just flush down the drain so this person can just spew out that gobbledygook spew out that just like alien xenomorph acid <laughs> that they call language I mean oh just everything about all of these people is just on the nose get it um on the nose um God, Columbia University, it's just all so fucking perfect. It's all so on the nose. Columbia to transform my research methodology. Uh, women, women mobilizing memory, an innovative transnational cross-collaboration of scholars, activists, and artists who feature cultural memory in their practices. Yeah, again, once again, like, everyone who's in the know, anyone who's not a blue-pilled normie, just knows that she's just trying to mobilize violence in the streets. And she's getting paid like five or six figures from you, taxpayer, to do it. This country is funding its own demise in a variety of different facets. As a w teacher of world literature, composition, and women's gender and sexuality studies for undergraduates, I aim to decolonize the literary canon throughout the college's core curriculum by highlighting underrepresented voices. They're not underrepresented. They're not fucking underrepresented. They are statistically overrepresented. We gotta drive that point home. We gotta stop saying, hey, you know, the Republicans are the real representatives of the underrepresented. No, stop it. 
Blakes are overrepresented in media. Stop lying. Okay? Use, they get to use words like decolonize. Like, they're paying women crazy, vampiric, demonic, harpy harlots like this. Six-figure fucking government stipends to falsely use words like decolonize. Why are you using the word decolonize in any modern context? That's <laughs> just so fucking crazy. The colonial era is over. Need I remind you? <laughs> These people are fucking crazy. Uh, thanks to my efforts, I became the only doctoral candidate in the history of college to receive the Core Preceptor Award for Teaching Excellence twice and the Presidential Award for Outstanding Teach. <sighs> it's not prestige. It's 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 corrosion. That's what it is. Influenced by all these experiences, my dissertation, arts, yes, 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 uh, uh, for its disappearance, transnational to slavery, femicide, and genocide. Dude, masculine aside is fucking way more of a big deal. I mean, dude, this is like a 2015 fucking talking point, but, uh, you know, the likes of Karen Strawn pointed out that Boko Haram was only an issue. Not when the cages full of young boys were being burned alive. Oh, no. Uh, but only when they showed the little girls being trafficked. Nobody gave two shits when it was little boys being burned alive. No, of course not. Because we live in a gynocentric society run by... certain... I don't know, sandy-complexioned tribes members. Uh, and they hate you because you're white and male. And they have a lot of power and a lot of influence and get a lot of awards for being horrible, disgusting people. If you want to understand why the incentive structure in this society is so fucking out of whack, follow the nose, okay? Oh my god, I, I just, I don't want to, I don't care. I don't want to look through your fucking accolades. I think, I think you should be at home in the kitchen. Like, I really do. And every class period spent doing this and not, you know, spent in the kitchen making, you know, being, being bubby or whatever, right? <laughs> I think you're doing a disservice to the country. I really do. You should be pumping out like 87 babies. You should be at home, at home with the kids, you know, instead of, Hey, mommy's home from like a job. Um, you'd already be home, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, let's look at some of the product, like the, the end product of some of this fucking, I have to kill the uh, lo-fi hip hop beats, but we're gonna look at and, and hear some of the, the poetry from this fucking program, okay? I should put the captions on. Oh, sheesh. Brace yourself. So this is this is some of the poetry that uh, these marginalized voices. I mean, this this is why we have to subsidize the big bucks for these kind of people to pump this kind of stuff out. Okay, let her rip. Oh wait. The apartment I share with my dad and my two dogs is a basement. Sunlight is non-existent. Ugh. I'm home alone, per usual. And Brain cells, non-existent. Inside my bedroom, I've got my phone in one hand, my hair strands in the other. The hand with the hair strands strokes the root, grips it, and then pulls until the hair goes away. Wow, dude. My breathing is unfailing until it stops altogether. When I noticed a large pile of hair on the floor. Every day, I pull out the hair from my head. Yo, just get my a haircut. My right hand have exchanged shifts. You know, when you're losing your hair, it's kind of just time to, like, accept it and get a, get a crew cut, right? So when one... You can't keep the rock and roll lifestyle forever. One hand gets too tired. The other picks up the job. Amid SAT and AP exams, 
Today I noticed an extraordinary amount of hair on the floor. AP hair loss? Hair I've just plucked from my head. <sighs> Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I go ahead and pull as many as I can for as long as I can, which winds up to be about an hour. An hour later, my dad gets home and I have to show him the largest bald spot I've ever created. I don't show him my sore fingertips, but I do show him the pile of hair that's the size of an unwound ball of yarn in my room. Okay. Oh my god, that is cringe. So 690,000 dreamers, okay? So apparently, like, this has to be subsidized. Like, this cringy, like, goth, punk rocker kind of poetry zine. It sounds like something out of a fucking hipster zine, right? Doc Martin boots tapping, you know, 400 views in three years, right? One might ask themselves, well, why the hell does a college need to be subsidized in order to produce stuff like this? Um... It's a power grab. It's 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 just simply so that non-leftists won't ever have a spot. I mean, that's probably one of the main things. It's it's to sa you know saturate and stratify the space, right? That's pretty much all it is when you break it down. Let's go on to the next one, and this is just going to be all I can fucking handle because <laughs> as much as I love you guys and cringing on your behalf. Um, that is a fat number. And how many of them are being just pandered to and given goodies and just given gibs and being allowed to fucking hurt people and just do whatever, man? You know? It's it's fucking distressing. What's this other one here? Let's let's go over this. Streaming out loud. Voices of student dreamers. In retrospect, the bodies that surrounded her back in Ghana were practically king's folk. They were familiar. But here she was in a country which was supposed to cringe hipsters, dude. The best in the world offering a platform. See, again, nobody attends this kind of stuff. This is at some fucking hole in the wall dive bar in what? Queens, whatever. <laughs> for writers and artists, free expression is something we sometimes take for granted. For children of undocumented immigrants, expressing themselves can come with risks. Uh, no? If you're white, male, Christian, and conservative, expressing yourself can come with risks. Stop lying. Uh, immigrating from Ghana. Shaking off the feeling of entrapment. I thought she was coming to live in a horrible, patriarchal, white supremacist society. There are people from various parts of the globe, and yet still couldn't shake off her feeling of entrapment. Despite the many bodies that surrounded her, she was still engulfed in a vulturous loneliness. The bodies meant nothing because they were exactly that, bodies. Ones with whom she had a hard time resurrecting into familial beings. Just like many of the Ghanians she knew, she married someone she barely knew in hopes of becoming legal. Legal. Making humans legal on Earth? Yes! Hold on a second. We're all from the Earth, man. We're just all, like, one people, man. Like, okay. This is why we need to convince boomers that being pumped about Mr. MLK, excuse me, the, 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 the Dr. MLK, and uh, his teachings of, like, pluralism or egalitarianism, all that stuff, we gotta convince them that's wrong, okay? That's a hippy dippy granola munching way of looking at things where we're all one people, man. Listen to what listen to what this person says. Hold on. Illegal. Wait, 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 wait. And then she knew she married someone she barely knew in hopes of becoming legal. Legal. Making humans legal on earth? Yeah. What absurdity. What hypocrisy. Hypocrisy and absurdity. No, it's called uh civilization. Something that you came here from Ghana 
to enjoy, and now you're trying to subvert with the aid of, well, you're successfully aiding in the subversion of, with the generous stipend of the taxpayers of New York. <laughs> but no, uh, he, human beings are illegal if they are committing crimes on Earth, yes. I mean. Perhaps the Americans and Westerners who have overstayed their time in Africa should also be sent to hacking with old spellings of illegal written all over their forehead. Yeah, but you don't know what civilization and law is, which is why you're here and not there. And with that, uh, I can't take any more of this cringe. If you want me to break down any more videos, articles, uh, just cringe in general, throw me nine bucks a month at uh, subscribestar.com slash the worst, and I will accommodate you. I'll also send you some cool holographic stickers, snail mail style. But uh, anyway, I'm going to cut this stream because that was cringe. But uh, tell your friends and subscribe on Alt Tech.